Beth, as we end 2013 and we begin 2014 in the new year, I can tell you that we have just started planning our Confident Women Conference for April 23rd, 24th, and 25th in Orlando, Florida. We have some amazing keynote speakers, some incredible breakout session speakers, and you're about to hear from one of those in just a moment. Um, as we begin the show, I want to introduce you to a very good friend of ours, the woman behind the WOMTEC brand, and someone that's going to get up close and personal with us to talk about how, how foods can affect your life and your health and your body. Body, um, how it can affect you and, and as well as your children and make a difference. So please join me in welcoming the incredible Diane Vivian. Diane, thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate you. having you here. Um, why don't you start by telling everybody a little bit about who you are and what you do? Well, I do many things. <laughs> I am a uh, marketing specialist. I am a branding guru, as you want to say. I love to brand. I have a, I'm a freelance designer. Um, but I also am very passionate about natural health uh, because, and that's why I'm so fortunate to be sitting here with you today so I can tell my story. Um, I just love the whole idea of looking, feeling young for as long as you possibly can. You know, I feel life is a gift and God has blessed me. He blessed me with talent so that I could express my talent through creative design. And uh, when I started to develop some health problems about 10 years ago with my heart, it just, he allowed a door to be opened, which totally transformed my, my future. You know, I'm, I'm so glad that you said that because a lot of people um, might be sitting here saying, well, why don't they have a healthy lifestyle coach or someone that specializes in nutrition, you know, talking about this segment. And I wanted to just get a little bit more raw with it. I wanted to get it a little bit more personal and I wanted to make sure that we talk to somebody that's just like you, that's just like everybody that's out there that's watching the show. You know, you had a situation in your life where you're, where you had that little check that happens where you say, okay, either it's, you either eat to live or you live to eat. You know what I mean? You, you eat either care about yourself and, and who you are, or you care about indulging at that particular moment. And you had that check that said, you know what, I need to care about myself. I need to care about my kids. I need to care about my family. And you made some changes in your life. So what was that moment like for you? And how easy were those changes? Well, it was, it was an epiphany because I had my children late in life. So I was working very many hours with my graphics business, and I had my son at 47. Wow. So I had a two-year-old running around who was, you know, very strong-willed, and I was trying to work, and I wasn't sleeping, and, and there were just a lot of stressors that was just bringing me down and making me go to a place that I didn't need to be going. So, you know, I, I'm a woman of faith. I'm going to tell you that right now. So God's going to be interjected a lot in this conversation today <laughs> because, you know, I, I had prayed to God one night. I said, you know, I was sitting in my computer and I was like, Lord, you know, do something. I need, I, I, something needs to change because I can't keep doing this. I was, I was just like on this road and I didn't know where it was leading me. I just knew I wasn't where I needed to be. Well, he decided to let me have atrial fibrillation, <laughs> which is a, uh, an irregular heart rhythm. And the first time it happened to me, it was completely uh, devastating. I was petrified. Went to the hospital in the emergency room, ended up being in the hospital a couple days. Started a relationship with a cardiologist, and uh, that led to four different medications. Medications not really helping me. I mean, I really felt like I was on a slippery slope. I was miserable because I'd kind of dabbled in natural health before that, but um, just sort of played at it. But when this happened, it was like, okay, I need to, I need to pay attention. I, need some, I, don't want, I don't want to go down this slippery road of being on drugs the rest of my life, being stuck, you know, going to doctors three times a week. I just didn't want that lifestyle. And I knew there was another way. I knew there was. I am a believer that God puts everything on this earth to help heal us and that food is medicine. I've, I've learned that. I, I know I don't have a degree in anything. I'm not a doctor of anything, but I feel like I'm getting my degree as I go through my life, and I will, I will get my degree the day I leave this earth. But in the process, I have learned so much, and thank God for the internet, because it just opened up my eyes to so many things 
that I wasn't aware of that I was able to learn and to make choices that were different from the path that I was on, the whole drug path. But you know, it, it's so important that you said that because so many people, we teach our kids, you know, you make good choices, you get, you get good results. You make bad choices, you get bad results. And we teach our kids all about making choices. But then as we get older, we sometimes get too busy to think through those choices, too busy to take the time to do your research. Like I've heard of, you mentioned GMOs earlier. I've heard of that, but mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I want to make good choices, but mm-hmm. if you don't take the time to teach yourself or to educate yourself, you're, you're not going to make those choices or you're not going to know. Right. Um, my mother, who I know you've met, is mm-hmm. just turned 71, and mm-hmm. she... Um, a year and a half ago, went to the doctors and her liver enzyme levels were like 300. Now, normal, like a high, like uh, let's let's get this tested as 70. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Normal's like 35. Mm-hmm. And the doctor, they took, they did liver biopsies and we, we feared the worst. Like mm-hmm. we were really concerned with it. Well, they've taken her off all of her medication because she was on cholesterol medication and she was on anxiety medication and she was, she That's was on all these medications. Slope. They took her off all the medication. Yeah. She's, she's a healthy, thriving 71 year old and her liver is now normal. Imagine mm-hmm. that. You know, yep. so it was the things that the doctors were prescribing yes. were actually making her sick yeah. indirectly, which yeah. is important. Right, and I, you know, I don't want to sit here and say, "Oh, drugs are bad," because you know, I mean, in in this world, sometimes you know, a drug you know, can save a life. I mean, I, I'm totally aware of that. But but for me, being on the four medications with uh, with my heart condition and everything, and it wasn't really helping. I, um, you know, there again, God stepped in. I believe, you know, through my mom, and she introduced me to a whole food health drink. And I was very skeptical, you know, I was like, oh yeah, another, you know, Mufu juice, you know, but I read the ingredients and I was impressed by them. So I decided to start drinking it. And so uh, I started drinking it on a Tuesday. And before that I was, had a monitor, you know, they were checking my heart and they were doing all these tests on me and everything. I'd been in and out of the emergency room three times through this problem. And I couldn't even sleep on my left side because my heart would just go out of rhythm, would just start bouncing like crazy. Well, I drank this on a Tuesday night, and the next day my heart was quiet when I got up the next day. And that made a huge impression on me. I was like, okay, there's something about this that's making sense. So over six months, I was able to drop two of the medicines. And uh, just this past year, I dropped the third, and it's one that's very hard to get off of. But I feel, I feel, I feel better. Every, every drug I'm off, I feel better. And it, it taught me the whole whole food way of life. And, and I know that there are people out there who say whole food, well, what the heck is that? You know, food is food. Right. Well, food is not food. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, food is not created equal. And, you know, when you go to a Whole Foods or a fresh market or a place like that and you see these hundreds of people in there, you know, it's, it's all in how the food is grown. It's how the food is processed or not processed. And I have chosen to try to find foods that have minimal to no processing. And processing means that the manufacturers take um, chemicals, basically, change the food to make it last longer, to make what they think makes it taste better, which is that corn syrup, the whole corn syrup thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, things like that that essentially don't do any really benefit to your body. You know, I've got a bowl sitting here of some fresh vegetables. You guys can't see it, but I can see it. And it just reminds me, yeah, there we go. (laughs) My prop, (laughs) my Whole Foods prop, Um, you know, to choose Whole Foods. And Whole Foods is, in in its simple terms, is just in its purest form. And means it hasn't been altered, it hasn't been changed. It's like fruits, vegetables, um, organic meats. What's organic meat? Organic meat is grass-fed beef or uh, chickens that haven't had uh, 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 probiotics and, and uh, pro- or, or, uh, antibiotics, I'm sorry, antibiotics ingested into them, you know, to get plumper meat. You know, there's, it's, a, it's a huge, it's so fascinating. And by me choosing this lifestyle has helped me, number one, stay out of the hospital for 10 years because I never wanted to go through that again. Um, drinking a whole food product that has all these fruits in it that has all the vitamins and minerals and everything that my body needs. Um, haven't had a flu for 10 years. Uh, you know, people around me are getting sick, and I'm not, praise God. I realize that, you know, there's no guarantees in life, but so far, so good. And, um, you know, just 
it, it, the choices. So, it's a daily choice that you I make. I think that that's important. You know, my daughter, Rachel, was diagnosed with something called chronic constipation. And she deals with, um, it's, it's kind of like urinary tract infections. It, it, it basically overflows, which causes a urinary tract infection, which means she's in pain, like at least Aww. twice a week or twice a month, um, you know, consistently. And I can tell you that the doctor has looked at her and said, if it grows from the ground, eat it. If it doesn't grow from the ground, don't. Um, and all of those things, and it's, it's important. So that's, if an eight-year-old can grasp that, and if a doctor's <laughs> telling an eight-year-old, then surely we, we can grasp that too and mm -hmm. understand that. And I think one of the things that you mentioned before the show is if you look at a label and you can't read it or don't know what it is, yeah. then that probably means it's a chemical and it yes. doesn't grow from the ground. Right. Um, so what are some of the suggestions? Like what are, if we were to go to a Whole Foods market or if we were mm -hmm. going to go to any store, what are some of the things that you, that you have changed and implemented in your lifestyle that you do? Do this instead of doing this. Well, one of the, th the these are one of my don'ts. I, mm -hmm. I don't eat white rice. I don't eat white bread. I don't eat regular white pasta. I, I eat brown rice pasta. Um, I don't, I stay away from wheat. This is a choice for me. Some people can handle wheat, no problem. I can't, it just seems to make me, make me blow up. Um, and it's because wheat is not the wheat of 50 years ago. Wheat, a lot of the wheats out there have been genetically modified. So, which means that they've changed the seed to act differently and that is not pure food. So. You know, when you're choosing breads, you want to make sure you're getting whole grain breads. You want to make sure that everything is, is whole. The, you know, that's why brown rice, not only do I think it tastes better, mm -hmm. it's just so much better for you and it doesn't make you blow up. It doesn't right. make you gain weight like all the white processed foods make you, you know, change your body. Now, you mentioned so. um, beef and you mentioned meat. One of the things that mm -hmm. I did when I was doing research on that is, yes, if you were to buy, you know, orga organic beef and, and something that was healthier for you, it does cost a little bit more. But one of the interesting things that I learned is the amount of fat grams in that is so much less mm -hmm. than if you buy the other. That personally, if I'm going to be able to enjoy what I'm eating, it's going to yeah. taste better and I'm not going to gain as much. It's not going to have right. as many fat grams in it. I would rather pay yeah. double yeah. To, to eat healthier mm -hmm. than, than not, you know, I mean, something. Really, anybody who wants to maintain their weight to have more energy during the day, I mean, their plate should be three quarters of vegetables and one quarter meat. Because, you know, we all need proteins, but there's you can get proteins from nuts and grains, and you can even get protein from some vegetables and some, you know, and fruits and stuff. But all your vitamins and minerals are in the food. And that's one other thing I want to mention. I know there's a lot of, uh, supplements. There's a lot of companies that sell, you know, really nice, good supplements, but truthfully, and this is not just me, this is a general statement, that our bodies absorb our nutrients best from a food product. It's just, it's just fact. And um, li a liquid absorbs 98% to any kind of pill. So if, you, if, you, if you're looking for a supplement, look for the liquid. And if you can't get the liquid, then take the pill. But a liquid is so far absorbed into the bloodstream faster and more efficiently and more effectively. And I think that you should talk to your doctor as well because a lot of the supplements that are on the market can actually cause damage to your liver. And you know they're, well, they're coming they're out with all these the, they're coming out with all these artificial supplements. Right. And and Dr. Oz or whoever I don't know I don't watch the show but say hey go buy this or you see a Facebook ad that says lose weight and whatever buy this and they're actually things that are harmful. Right. I know Tanya in our corporate office gets very frustrated sometimes because people make claims probably because that's what people tell them to say and they're, it's just that they don't know you know yeah. and they make claims that in in the long term scheme of things can actually cause physical damage to your body or to your liver or your kidney or any major organ for, yeah, the, for that you, matter. You want to try to avoid synthetic supplements and you know how can you tell? So that's why I'm so pleased that I know of something that I can take every day that is whole food and I know I'm getting my vitamins, my minerals, my antioxidants. You know. Now I want to talk to you about two more things before we wrap up. Um, I know since I've started eating cleaner probably for the last nine months, my kids do miss grandma's cooking a lot. <laughs> they miss they miss all the stuff that she used to make and add to it. And I know that, you know, eating clean, they get used to it, they accept it, but how did your family adjust to it? When you made this decision for yourself, how easy was it to get the family on board? Um, well, they, I mean, they fought a little bit of it. You know, usually when we're talking white rice to brown rice, you know, they'd rather have the white rice. They'd say, I don't like how brown rice tastes. I'm like, well, too bad, because it's better for you. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm the mom, and you're the kid, and I know better because I'm training you. So it's just been a matter of just 
get, and introducing it to them on a regular basis. And they've heard me talk. They know my story. They, you know, they see the evidence of me in my life and how eating whole foods and choosing you know, to stay away from certain things for the most part and choose other things has impacted you know, my weight and you know, just my energy level and you know, everything about me. So uh, my daughter's now 17 and then my son is 11. So you know, what does my son ask for as a snack? Oh, mommy, can you cut up an apple for me, please? Can I have some grapes? You know, they, they really understand the benefits of eating raw, whole foods. You know, that's another thing real quick, just, you know, raw, should always have something raw every day. I know some people go all raw, which is very admirable. I personally can't do that, but, um, but raw is excellent. But to have something like salad, some kind of fresh fruit, nothing, you know, that's just in its purest form, that is the best way to eat your food. We've started every every weekend I go fruit shopping, and um, every Sunday we spent, it's our chopping time, and it's really become a family activity with my daughters and myself that, you know, oh, can I cut that? Can I help you do that? <laughs> and if you take the time to make up like a bag full of chopped vegetables and a bag full of fruit, and, mm -hmm. and it's something that for at least three days that everybody can, can eat off of, they, really, they will, and they'll start to buy into it. And one of the things that I do is I put on the kitchen counter every day when everybody comes home from school, I make sure that there's a bowl that can be put on the kitchen counter. So after they wash their hands, every time they walk by, that's what they're, that's what they're snacking on. Mm -hmm. You know, they're grabbing it. If it's, if it's apples or if it's grapes or if it's vegetables, they'll eat it if it's sitting there and they're just kind of walking by and grabbing it versus mm -hmm. you making them sit down and eat carrots, mm -hmm. you know, or, or something yeah. like that, which you is know, important. And I'm not all about being, you know, super disciplined, like you're never having this and you're never having that. I mean, you know, we're, we're, life shouldn't be like that. But I mean, if there's a basis of good eating, good whole food eating every day, then it's okay to have a little, you know, piece of cheesecake or you know, indulge a little bit. It's everything, everything in moderation. That's, you know, I've, that's been said for many different things. But it's it, it's true with this too. But but it's 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 making those little decisions every single day that can help give you the energy and the vibrance in your skin, in your, in, and how your body functions everything. Now, in the beginning, you started this because you experienced a health issue. For somebody that may be watching this that may know somebody that they love that is just now being faced with a health issue, I know that in your personal circumstances, your husband um, mm -hmm. was faced with a life-threatening illness. Mm -hmm. How did that affect him? What changes did he make? What do you have to say about that whole experience? Well, I can just tell you for a fact, um, my husband, Gary, was diagnosed with um, bile duct cancer. Uh, in April of 2009 and he, before then he was a man you never got sick you think you think the man was gonna live forever he was just so strong so for this disease to take him over was just totally devastating to the family but he had heard me he sort of watched me from the outside you know doing all the whole foods thing and you know drinking my drink and you know doing all these things to try to take care of myself because of my heart condition so he was paying attention, but even though he wasn't really participating. Well, when he got the diagnosis, I said, okay, honey, now you have a choice. I said, you know, we know what can be done and we know what we can do. So what do you want to do? And he made the decision to totally go down this path, which was meat and potatoes, fried foods, you know, all the Taco Bells and everything, to take a total other direction, juicing, fresh vegetables every day, you know, very little meat, everything organic. And, you know, even though, unfortunately, he was not able to survive the cancer, for 10 months, that man had an incredible experience of life. We took five vacations that year. You know, he, he chose to not do any traditional medicine, traditional treatments. So he didn't lose his hair. He was a very meticulous man. Very, everything was perfect about <laughs> he him. He was gorgeous, yes. don't lie. Well, he was, <laughs> I agree. But anyway, you know, his quality of life was, was superb, you know, considering all he was dealing with with the cancer. He was still able to do and go experience. He went to see a family wedding. I mean, it was an incredible year, and I will be, I'm blessed by that year for, for, the, for the rest of my life. You know, and um, I had a wonderful thought, and it just went right out of my head. So That's okay. You're talking <laughs> about your husband going to heaven, so I completely yes. understand. And thank you for sharing that because, you know, a lot of people that, that watched you go through that because you've been a charter member of WOMTEC mm -hmm. said, you know, well, if, if eating healthy and oh, juicing is, is something that will affect, will, will benefit you, then mm -hmm. how could her husband pass away due to something so terrible? And mm -hmm. what I think the, the lesson to be learned is because he made that choice, it went a lot of people, realistically, a lot of people that know their odds of surviving because it was a serious 
serious form of cancer. There was zero chance. Uh, the odds it, of surviving are little. Zero. A lot of people would say, heck with this, and go to Taco Bell and drink yeah. as much as they can and say, whatever, yeah. you know, I'm gone anyways. But it gave him the health, the energy, oh, yeah. the the made. motivation mm -hmm. to to keep moving forward, oh, yeah. and, and, and that's I, awesome. And I know, and I know, I'll never, ever doubt that it helped him immensely. And what the thing I did want to, I remembered it. <laughs> um, it's, it's all about quality of life. You know, we never know how long we're going to be on this earth. And, you know, I, I, that's a very hard lesson I had to learn when I lost my husband. You know, I never expected him to die at 51. But the quality of life that he was able to have, as sick as he was, the quality of life that I feel like I am able to have with this diagnosis that I was given in my heart um, 10 years ago, that I've been able to stay out of the doctor's office, out of the cardiologist's office. I am under the care of a doctor, but it's a holistic doctor. You know, the things that I do, it's all about quality of life, being able to enjoy the days that we have on this earth. So I want to live until I die, whether it's next week or 50 years from now. And I feel like I've got the secret to long life, you know, according to God's plan. Mm -hmm. I realize, you know, this really in not control. in my control. Right. But because I, I am so grateful for this gift of life, I want to honor this body that he has given me to live in by eating the types of foods that he made to give to us to eat every day and, and say thank you to him by taking care of myself is a way to, to honor God. That's awesome. Thank you, Diane, so much for sharing that. I really appreciate that. Um, <laughs> I welcome. really, really do. You know, and I can totally relate to that. As you were talking, I just had a flashback that I try and run um, three and a half miles at least three to five days a week now. And, and I was at Cranes Roost Park the other day, and I was running around, and I saw my pastor and his wife. Now, my pastor's like 71, 72, maybe even 73. They were, they were speed walking. Talk about getting motivated. They were like seven <laughs> feet behind me, and it was like I had to run, 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 because I'm thinking, um, now I've got someone behind me feeling guilty if I'm not taking care of my temple <laughs> that God gave That's me, right. you know, That's right. um, and they can't keep up with us. Now, Diane has an incredible prize for somebody who wants to live a high quality of life. So if what she said resonated with you, if what she said touched your heart or touched your soul, what I want you to do is I want you to go to the WOMTECH Facebook page. Again, go to WOMTECH uh, or go to Facebook, type in WOMTECH. It's the Facebook page that has about 1,900 people following it. Or go to WOMTECH and type in Diane, or go to Facebook and type in Diane Vivian, or go to WOMTECH.com and type in Diane Vivian, <laughs> and let her know that you want to have the quality of life that she was referencing. And if you do, she's not only going to connect with you, but she will give the first person to connect with her a complimentary bottle of Via Viente. So thank you, Diane, again for being here. It was a pleasure to have you here. And, and you know, I hope as we continue to talk and as we continue to grow, I hope that you understand that it truly is about the quality of life. You know, you could work really super hard and you can make lots of money, but if you're not happy with the lifestyle you're living, if you're not happy with how you feel, if you don't feel great, you know, I used to wake up every day and I used to depend on a Diet Coke. And now what's amazing is when I don't drink that Diet Coke, I feel so much better about everything that I do. I I feel so much better about about just living and thriving and, and making a difference. So um, we want you to do that. We want you to work hard. We want you to live hard. And we want you to play hard and love hard. And that's what WOMTEC's all about. Take just a minute. We're going to take a brief break. And then we've got somebody very special to talk to us about you and your children.
I hope, you, for those of you that don't know what WAMTEC's all about, I hope you learned a little bit about our organization. I would love to connect with you personally. I would love for you to visit a chapter somewhere in the United States or start a chapter somewhere in the United States. We are always looking for a few good leaders, people who are willing to um, help us with our mission, educating people, encouraging people, surrounding yourself around positive, passionate, professional women that believe in keeping their priorities of faith first, family second, and career third. But more importantly, I want you to know that men are welcome in WAMTEC. Women are just required, which is important. So now as we continue, you know, I want to talk to you a little bit about, before we meet our next guest, um, she's going to be discussing ADHD, ADD, how it may affect you and your business or how it may affect your children and the importance of early detection. I can tell you that um, I'm speaking with her personally because she has helped me with two of my children so far, and I'm sure she can continue to, to help you or at least share with you some ideas, share, share with you some things to consider. And I know food does play a role in, in both of my children, you know, processed foods. The tutor even said the other day, before Rachel comes over for tutoring, make sure she doesn't have anything but natural foods. Don't give her processed foods. I've been told to give them cocoa in the morning to help balance them out a little bit. So there's little things that you may learn, but we're going to dig a little deeper. We're going to talk a little bit more about how ADHD may be affecting your child's life, may be affecting their schooling, their grades, how ADD, how to detect things like ADD, and what's the difference between what your school can offer you and when to go to an outside psychologist. So now please welcome to the set Terry Mattingly. Terry, thank you so much Hi. for being here today. Thank you for having me. I mean, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much because Terry is single-handedly the first person that helped us get our daughter Michelle in the very beginning. So I'm very blessed to have you here today. Thank Tell everybody you. a little bit about who you are and, and what you do. Um, well, I'm a licensed school psychologist in private practice, so I don't work in the school system, although I used to. Um, I've been in private practice about 10 years, and um, parents and families that are um, having concerns about their child, whether it's learning, um, attention, behavioral problems, um, the school maybe has brought it to their attention that there's issues, um, or the parents are seeing some issues at home. Um, they bring them in to me for an evaluation, um, and I do a comprehensive evaluation looking to see what could be um, affecting their functioning. Okay, well, let's talk about that a little bit more, and I'm going to give you some personal examples using our children, because when Michelle first came to us, she was three and a half, almost four, and mm -hmm. it, she's definitely a, a lovely, spirited young lady, a lot like me, so it's just kind of funny, because I wonder how you diagnose me, um, <laughs> but she came to me, and she um, was obviously a little hyper. She was always the ch child that was interrupting, even at four years old. Mm -hmm. She was always all over the place. She was always super excited, and you can tell there was focus. You know, yes. I jokingly say, um, remember the show where it's like, oh, there's a squirrel, you know, like I'm okay. over there. And she was just all over the place. So at four, we recognized that there was a struggle, there was a challenge. And, and she came to you and um, you absolutely helped us get her on the right path. And I'm proud to tell you that she had all A's and one B and she's really working hard to get That's the B wonderful. up. And the B was in advanced math, which I questioned, how is she in advanced math at first? Because, because she has always struggled, struggled, but she's learned with the help of you, with the help of medication, she's learned to overcome those struggles. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to talk a little bit because Rachel, on the other hand, who is very different than, than Michelle, Rachel, on the other hand, I, di I didn't see those signs. So what is the difference between ADHD and ADD, and what are some of the signs that people look for? Okay. Um, you'll hear those terms ADHD and ADD. It actually is all classified as ADHD. A lot of people will refer to um, uh, ADHD that doesn't have as much of the hyperactivity as ADD. But really, all of the um, disorders fall under the umbrella of ADHD, which stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. And then there are different subtypes. So there's the combined type, which has kind of an equal amount of the hyperactivity and the impulsivity problems, which would be the interrupting, um, the, the activity level that you described with Michelle. You, okay. you know, she was more of the combined type. Um, the ones that are predominantly inattentive, um, you wouldn't see as much of the hyperactivity and the impulsivity. They're not as chatty. They're not interrupting people as much. Um, they would be kids that would make careless mistakes on their schoolwork, um, rush through things, um, have difficulties with organization, um, have difficulties following multi-step directions. Um, you know, you find yourself repeating yourself over and over again. Um, it's more of a focus and attention issue. It's not as much of an activity level issue. Okay. 
Um, one of the reasons why I asked you to be on the show today is because I thought I've learned so much through this experience that I'm sure that there are other people out there that may need to learn this process too. And what's the difference? Like when you first told me that you were a school psychi psychologist, I automatically thought, oh, she works for the school system. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case at all. So no. um, I wanted to educate people and make sure that you knew a little bit about, you know, when do you get help? But I, I would speculate that there are probably some parents that are out there or um, wives that are out there that are questioning whether or not your husband has ADD. Um, or ADHD, um, I, I speculate, what, it, what do you tell them if they're thinking, well, if I let my child get tested, then they're going to be labeled and that's going to mm -hmm. ruin the rest of their lives. Well, how do you respond to that? I do hear that a lot. A lot of families are concerned about um, labels and how it's going to affect the child, their self-esteem, how other people are going to see them, are the teachers going to treat them differently. Um, of course, as a parent, um, and I have, a, you know, I have three children of my own, um, you don't want to think there's anything quote unquote wrong with your child. Um, but really, it is a medical diagnosis, so, and there is a difference in the chemicals in the brain. So the frontal lobe of the brain, which is what handles planning and organization and that sort of thing, um, the chemicals that are needed are just not being produced enough. So the, the stimulant medication, which is the most common treatment for ADHD, um, works to stimulate that part of the brain. Um, but over the years, the stigma that used to be attached to ADHD has really decreased. Um, I think because more and more people are being diagnosed, um, and there's just, certainly you can go on the internet and, and learn about it. So um, there's just a lot more education about it, a lot of more people are informed and realize that it has nothing to do with intelligence, it has nothing to do with motivation. Um, you know, some of the most brightest, most successful people in the world um, have ADHD. Um, so in a lot of ways, it's a blessing. There are, there are wonderful characteristics that go along that we hear about the negative characteristics of things that they can't do or the things that they struggle with. Um, but you mentioned with Rachel, or excuse me, with Michelle, that she was, um, you know, had this bubbly, fun personality. We see that a lot, mm -hmm. not with all, but with a lot of ADHD kids. So they do have a special spirit in them. Um, and a lot of times, you know, other children like to be around them because they're a lot of fun. So um, it's just become, I think, more um, widely accepted. And um, so I would just you know, tell parents that um, basically we're finding out all that we can about your child, their strengths, their weaknesses, um, and then how we can help them be the most successful they can be. Okay, I think that's that's awesome because I know that with with Michelle, for example, because she was um, diagnosed at an early age, she was able to have all through from kindergarten on up. She was able to have special um, attention, special mediation, special testing capabilities that didn't make her feel isolated. Mm -hmm. I mean, even at the time, they called it the SLD, Severe Learning Disabled right. Program. They have since wised up and changed that because mm -hmm. how can you not only negatively impact your child right. once that gets out, but they've changed that. But she was in those programs, but she knew that when she needed to ask for help and mm -hmm. she she eventually figured out now she's in sixth grade now but she eventually figured out you know what I'm I'm owed this this is this is what this is I need this is something right. that's important to me and um, when it's testing day she goes out of her way and and that was something that was huge I had a hard time with medication and I thought okay well do I just do watch your foods watch your vegetables mm -hmm. do I not do medication and I've learned that when a child comes to you and says mom can I please have that mm -hmm. I have a special test today mm -hmm. then you know it's helpful their thought mm -hmm. process. You know it's helping what they do. Now, yeah. when do people come and hire you? Um, usually at the beginning of, um, you know, the best time is when the, when the child's, um, you know, I would say about four or five years old if there are concerns. Early intervention is the most important. Um, most of my clients are probably more like eight or nine years old. And then I have some that are in high school that have never been diagnosed that I work with. Um, but earlier the better, because um, otherwise, if they've been struggling for several years, they're, they're internalizing that, they're feeling frustrated. A lot of times they don't like school, they feel poorly about themselves. Um, and when I do the full battery of tests, um, one part of it is an IQ test. Some of them act shocked when I, you know, if the child's old enough and the parents are okay with it, I'll sometimes share the results with them and say, look how smart you are. But for years, they've felt like they were, you know, the dumbest kid in the class, mm -hmm. for lack of a better word. And um, so obviously we want to avoid that 
and we want them to um, you know get the help that they need as early as possible. So they can so they can feel smart. They can feel worthy because if you don't feel worthy, how are you going to be the best you can be? How are you going to achieve exactly. your success and your goals? You know, another thing that I have learned this past year that I thought it was important to share with you just in case you may have a child that's experiencing the same thing. Last year at the beginning of the year, we started noticing some sporadic testing results with my daughter. And, and one of the things that I can tell you is um, some of the testing results that we have found was she would go to school and she would get she would get an F. She got an F on a spelling test. And I was kind of shocked because we studied the night before and she got 100%. And she's a smart speller. She knows how to do it. And the teacher actually wrote a note that said she needs to be studying, like, underline explanation point. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, no, you don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she did study. Mm-hmm. It's not my fault. And, and I really felt as though she felt like I I was being a bad parent mm-hmm. so I kind of stepped in I requested a teacher meeting we met she said I would encourage you to request testing because you know that's that's sporadic that's mm-hmm. not that's not normal and so we requested testing and it took from the beginning of the school year through May and and I almost felt it's a great school but I almost felt like it was political I almost felt mm-hmm. like they were they didn't want to give up their dollars on mm-hmm. testing my child because she wasn't bad enough yet she wasn't Mm -hmm. failing enough yet Mm -hmm. and it took me getting in touch with a school board member that I know and saying I've got this problem I need you to help and until the school board member called the principal they didn't do the testing but what you taught me was Mm -hmm. the testing that they do isn't going to detect ADD or ADHD Mm -hmm. anyways what what is the testing that the school would do for a child the school would do the testing for learning disabilities so if they're if you're suspecting that there's some kind of an underlying learning disability which is different than ADHD um, I do evaluations for learning disabilities as well, um, but that's all the school will do is um, a battery of tests to determine if there's some kind of a learning disability. So a lot of children don't have an underlying learning disability. and All they really have is an attention issue, and it could be mild or moderate or severe. Um, so they would have to go to an outside professional to be evaluated for the attention issue. Okay, and that's basically where we're at right now because they, they really said if you send her on her happy way, if you, you know, then she'll just keep doing what she's doing. And, yeah, someday she'll get A's, someday she'll get D's, someday she'll get C's, and mm-hmm. it'll just be this sporadic thing. But what we've learned is through that testing that the school did, for starters, she has a very high auditory processing, which means what she hears, she, re- she recalls and she can remember. So now if I can get the testing done with you, mm-hmm. you can get the proper documentation to say, hey, this is the attention issue she has. If she can do her testing in a little room, all by herself mm-hmm. and she can actually read it out loud now she's gone from a sporadic a c d f mm-hmm. you know student to an a student mm-hmm. because we've given her the learning um, environment that she excels at and so i think that that's Absolutely. what's important with what yes. you do now if you have any advice for a, a parent that's watching here today um, what do you find is one of the biggest mistakes that parents make when when working with children that that need this this help that need your help yeah um, I would say waiting, waiting too long, um, hoping that, oh, you know, they'll grow out of it, or um, blaming the child, um, thinking that they're just being lazy or unmotivated, um, blaming the teacher, blaming the school. Um, you know, get as much information as you can about the child in terms of a comprehensive evaluation um, so that you can have realistic expectations of what you can expect from your child. And um, we all have strengths and weaknesses, so it's important to identify what those are and build on those strengths and do what we can to support, you know, any areas of weakness that we find. Um, but, you know, it's okay to acknowledge that, you know, my child needs help. Right. And, um, you know, not to worry about what other people think or say um, and just do what you can to get as much information as you can so that you can put a plan in place to help them. Now, I know that... Uh, often as children grow older as they you know graduate from college and start a job and all of that they Mm -hmm. either put themselves in the area of strength that they are like they find a career that focuses on their strengths Mm -hmm. so they can continue to excel but if you have an adult that's watching the show that says man my mom never took me to get diagnosed but Mm -hmm. I really think I may be Mm -hmm. ADD or I may Mm -hmm. be ADHD um, what is there anything they can do about it now or do you say you know what you're 50 just deal with it you know I do evaluations on adults and that's that's the conversation I have with them quite frequently actually is I've always suspected it or you know depending on how old they are you know if they're in their 40s well it wasn't really diagnosed all that much back when I was a kid Mm -hmm. Um, and or my parents thought I had that but wouldn't give me medication to help me 
and I really resent them for that because school was much harder for me than it needed to be. And so I is there a way that they can get help now? Like are there things, if they're in business and mm -hmm. they have ADHD and they're you know 40 years old and they're in business mm -hmm. and they're working every day, what are some of the things that could be affecting them? Like is it just not being able to focus on a list of things to do or right. um, not being able to complete a task? Like what are some of the signs that may be red flags that they may want to look into? Um, having a lot of difficulty multitasking, you know, um, I think we all do multitasking today because that's the way that, you know, the world is. Right. Um, but, you know, losing things, forgetting things, having, you know, poor organization, um, you know, being late and forgetful is a, is a big thing that you see. Um, oftentimes when I evaluate a child, I'll see the parent and kind of know where it comes from because there's <laughs> a strong genetic component there. Um, so that's always interesting. But, um, yeah, de decreased productivity. A lot of times they feel tired. Um, and, and is that just because they're like all over the place that it's mentally exhausting to yes. them? Yes, and then, and then feeling frustrated because they're not getting what they need to get done at the end of the day um, because they're so easily distracted by things. It can affect, you know, marriages. It can affect family life, you know, as well as jobs. So, um, you know, more and more adults are identifying that in themselves after they've had their child evaluated. Mm -hmm. They're seeing a lot of those same characteristics in themselves and going and getting medication. Okay. Well, that is awesome. Well, thank you so yes. much for sharing with us today. It's a thank pleasure you. having you here. Thank you. And I know that I you can it. connect with Terry on the WOMTEC page as well as the WOMTEC Facebook page. So um, we will continue to, to share your information with everybody in WOMTEC. And if you have any questions for Terry, please reach out to her um, via WOMTEC. It's Terry Mattingly. And again, she is in the Heathrow chapter of WOMTEC. So visit WOMTEC.com and look up her name. Do a search by Terry, T-E-R-R-Y. And you can connect with her today and she can direct you. If you're not in Florida with somebody throughout the mm -hmm. United States probably you might be able to sure. tell them what to look for Absolutely. at the very least as to how yes. to find a, a psychologist to work with sure. so all right well thank, thank you so much you. I appreciate you um, you know, we have a lot of amazing things, like I mentioned before, happening as far as growth is concerned. I want to mention and give a big shout out to Tina Delgado, who is starting a chapter in the Davenport area. She came to us and she's already tearing things up with lots of new members. She'll be la launching soon. Um, but we have chapters launching across the United States of America. Now, we're kind of in a pickle because we want to continue to grow. We want to um, continue to help make a difference in people's lives, but we can't advertise with WOMTEC. So we can't advertise people looking for positions. We can't advertise. Um, somebody that, you know, hey, now hiring directors throughout the United States because if we advertise, we find people that want to make money. Yes, being a director is a compensated position and you can earn extra revenue um, by leading a WOMTEC chapter in your community. But what we need to find is somebody that um, is already successful because, you know, the speed of the leader is the speed of the gang. We want to find people that are going to attract successful people. And um, so if you know somebody, whether they're a close personal friend, whether they're in your own neck of the woods or neighborhood, or whether they're across the United States of America, please connect them with us. Just tell them to go to WOMTech.com to check out who we are and what we do and help us continue to educate lives and make a difference in, in the lives of others um, through our mission of empowering women, um, building businesses and strengthening communities. Um, speaking of building businesses and strengthening communities, the next person I'm going to introduce you to is a dynamic woman, also a charter member of WOMTech. Um, she has been here since the very beginning. She supported several chapters. And you may recognize her face because she is the, on the back cover of our Confident Woman magazine, which the new magazine is um, has gone to print and it will be out in the next couple of days. So we're so excited about that. It's going to feature a brand new article and the first recipient of the Courage to Dream campaign that's being conducted by the WOMTEC Foundation. So we are so excited about that new magazine. Please help us spread the word. We want to continue to break the cycle of victimization and help young adults who are aging out of foster care connect with the business women and few good men within WOMTEC to help mentor them to support, to give them ideas and suggestions, and to basically create a bridge be between them being out on the streets and between the dreams that they may have for tomorrow to let them know that, you know, it, if you do believe you can achieve, and you can be an inspiration to others. So um, D Tui has been a very big support in the WOMTEC Foundation. So D, thank you so much for being here, for supporting the magazine, for supporting our chapters, and for just being an amazing member. I appreciate having you here today. Well, I appreciate being a member of WOMTEC, such a fabulous organization. Yay, and you've been here since the beginning, so you've watched it I grow. Have. And you've traveled not only from chapter to chapter, but from state to state to meet members in Texas. And, and I know that you've got some great relationships going on. Mm -hmm. So.
I've asked you here today, we, we wanted to talk about um, being healthy, living healthy. We wanted to talk about stress and some of the things that cause most of our members a tremendous amount of stress. And I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things that you've been watching a lot of our members go through because she's worked with a lot of our members. But first, tell everybody who you are and what you do. Like, what do you do for a living? I'm Dee Tui. I'm the broker owner of Innovative Realty Solutions Group. So we help people buy and sell their financial dreams through housing. And I want to give a big shout out to Stuart, who is her husband, significant other, who is online right now watching. So yay, Stuart. Thank you for supporting Dee. I appreciate it. Now, Dee, the reason why I asked you here today is, is I know when members have stress in their life, it creates health issues. It creates havoc in their life. It, uh, you definitely aren't going to run a successful business. You definitely aren't going to be a um, stellar mom of the year because when you feel stress, you feel anxiety and that anxiety creates a burden, creates a weight and it, and it pulls you down. So I wanted you to just kind of share with us a couple of the stories that you've dealt with. You don't, don't mention names of course, but the stories that you've dealt with of people that are within our organization that have had to make some tough decisions and um, how it affected their lives. I recently got a phone call from a member uh, where she was uh, had been ignoring letters from her lender for a very, very long time about late mortgage payments. And finally, someone convinced her to call me, and we spoke. And uh, she had a hearing set up called a mediation hearing for foreclosure. So I did some research. I called her back. I told her I would attend that mediation with her. I spoke to her lender's attorney as well as a negotiator for the lender, and I asked them to give us a little bit of time so that we could work on her problems and get her house sold as opposed to letting it go to foreclosure. We were granted that time, and 121 days after that mediation, we got her house sold and closed. And I have to tell you that at the closing, once she signed the final documents, she jumped up in the air and just was thrilled that it was over. And so much stress had been taken out of her life and so much weight lifted off her shoulders. And she is even today so excited to go and start her life over and have her children in, an, in a new environment and have a mom that's a lot less stressed. Mm -hmm. Uh, financial stress is a horrible stress for everybody. We've all been there. We've all struggled to make mortgage payments or rent payments over time. Uh, what I want to encourage members to do is to make the right phone calls when you first get those letters, not to let them pile up until the problem is, is so far into a process to where either you're going to get evicted or you're going to experience a foreclosure because those are going to only make your stressful situations worse. I think, you know, you're right. It's, it's, we try and hold on to things. We try and hold on to everything we have because psychologically I believe that, that those items help create our personal self-worth when it's not really what creates your self-worth. And I know you get that. Oh, but yeah. often we try and hold on to it because um, the fear of letting it go. But what we realize is in the long run, the, how much energy it takes to hold on to it requires so much more energy and creates so much more stress that if you would just let go and, and just be okay with it and, to, and have faith and, and have trust, but, but to surround yourself with wise people. And I think that there are a lot of people that take advantage of people in vulnerable situations. And one of the things that I love the most about you and several other realtors that I can recommend to you throughout the nation, but one of the things I love the most about you is that I know personally your heart. And I know that if someone were to come to you and you were to think that this is a better situation and it would cost you commission, I have no doubt in my mind, you would give up the commission knowing that helping that one person will get you two or three other persons in the long, other people in the long run because you'll be blessed. It'll be paid forward in some way. And, and that I admire. So make sure you find somebody that cares about what's best for you and not what's best for their pocket. Absolutely. 100% of the time, it is always about doing the right thing for the customer, taking care of the customer's money. If I do that, I know the Lord will bless me and my money will always be fine. And I've proven that time and time again in many situations where uh, we've uncovered situations where just letting the house go through another process as opposed to a sale is the best thing for the customer because it ends their stress in the most timely manner. That's the goal. 
Absolutely. Now, um, for those people that have gone through, and you've gone through a lot even yourself-wise, which, by the way, girlfriend, I heard you did a 5K the other day, and that's awesome. I did. And that is I awesome, did. considering that you've had, well, you've dealt with cancer. Mm -hmm. in, has it been five years? Three. Okay, th wow. Three and a half. Okay, three and a half years you've dealt with cancer. You've dealt with a bad back, a bad, a bad foot, knee. Like, you've been all banged up. <laughs> well, you know, I like to play hard and I've I've made uh, a few mistakes and had a few accidents where I've injured myself and the older you get the less you heal quick so it's taken a little bit of time to get things back but I was really really grateful to be able to do the 5k in September and very excited that I was able to actually complete that there was a time that walking to my car was a problem so to walk a 5K and then about a mile to and from the car was really, really exciting. That, I'm so proud of you. I'm Thank so proud you. of you. And that's an example of when you put your mind to something, you can work your way through it. You know, mm -hmm. somebody posted on Facebook just today a video about a young lady that was in a severe car accident and she had pins in her knees and braces on her legs and it said that she, the doctor said she would never walk again. Well, she just competed in, what's that thing Kathy Abbott did? Um, the, what's it called? The, the Ironman? No, what's the weight building thing? Uh, Wait, the muscle body thing, bodybuilding, bodybuilding, that's what it is. You can tell that's not my thing. Um, a bodybuilding championship. So she went from never being able to walk again to winning and placing in a bodybuilding championship. And I think it's, it's, it's power over your mind, you know, where there's a will, there's a way, back which is in, important. In 1970, I was pregnant and I was in a car accident and I broke my back and I was advised to have surgery. They wanted to put steel rods down my spine. And I was told without the surgery, I would never walk. I was also told I would never deliver a healthy fetus. My baby boy is 42 and a half years old, wow. and I'm still walking, and yes, I still do have back problems, but I've learned through some of our own members how to manage that pain a little bit better, and I did a 5K, so what can I say? That's awesome. Okay, going back to the housing industry and, and what you're faced with, I know that a lot of people have been talking about things that, ads that they see that have to do with our president, and um, are, are some of those claims, in your opinion, true, or is it something we should look for? Do you have any words of advice to our members? Well, the ads I see are the ones that say, the president just approved restructuring your mortgage. Folks, I don't care who the president is president doesn't restructure your mortgage. The president doesn't loan money. So I encourage people, instead of clicking those ads and calling those people and paying high fees, get in touch with an attorney, an accountant, or a really good real estate professional. We know how to help you, and it doesn't cost you any money to figure out how to do that. I sit with people all the time, and I look at their finances, and I look at uh, where their money is going and what their situation is and if they have a hardship I have the team to refer them to for no charge mm -hmm. and yes there are some programs that our Congress and President have signed into law that will help certain people refinance but that number is not a great number you still have to have the ability to pay the loan so if the hardship isn't over yet you're not going to get approved for those programs. You have to face the fact that you may not be able to keep your house, but also you may. Mm -hmm. So every situation is different. Every, everybody is different. Every lender is different. So it takes working with a team of professionals that know how to stop that foreclosure process for you before it gets to, to be too late. And it's really important for our members to know, like. Texas is a, what is called a non-recourse state. So in Texas, if you go through a foreclosure, you are out of the debt completely. Florida is the opposite. We are a recourse state, which means if you go through a foreclosure and you owe that lender $200,000, they're going to add the interest as well as fifty dollars to $60,000 potentially in cost to that judgment that you're going to get. And what we like to do is stop people from having to deal with that judgment because the only way out of that debt at that point is bankruptcy. So if you live in a recourse state, you're not only losing your home, you're going through a foreclosure and a bankruptcy. And if we can stop that and help you down another path, we can eliminate your stress a lot better and that will help you stay healthier 
as well as taking care of uh, your finances a little bit better so that you can move forward and recover quicker. Because there is a way that you can absolutely recover and there are people that can help you recover. You know, I think something that's important to talk about is a lot of times when people are desperate, you know, everything looks, if it looks too good to be true, people, it's probably too good to be true. <laughs> and that's really important to analyze because I know you had mentioned something about a client who, um, ha well, we had an interest only loan on my mom's property when we owned mm -hmm. my mom's property. And, you know, the reality was I, you had to come to us and get me to stop being emotional about it and to understand that she's going to be most likely dead by the time you finish paying that interest only loan and the property value isn't going to be where it needs to be because of the length of the loan. Mm -hmm. So what I was holding on to was this could be my children's you know, future house one day that they can live in when they were going to college. The reality of it would have been such a burden to keep it that whole time we were waiting for it to become the blessing that it could have become that if we would have invested that money elsewhere it would have been a wiser financial decision. So not making an emotional decision mm -hmm. but being able to separate yourself from it enough to make a business decision, a financial decision. Mm -hmm. And um, like you mentioned with the young lady that had the interest only loan and then they gave her $25,000 on top of it. Yeah, when you're in a tough situation, if someone's going to say, here, and I'll give you $25,000, you're like, oh, praise God, it's the answer to everything I've been waiting for but you're just getting yourself further into debt. It's not solving the problem. Mm -hmm. I just had the greatest experience back in 2008. A WOMTEC member referred me a young lady that was struggling and getting a divorce, and we got her house short sold. And then uh, about a year later, I one of her colleagues was needed to, needing services, so we got his house sold as a short sale. Later, they got married, and fast forward the clock from 2008 and 2009 to this past summer, and they just uh, closed on a new property. So they've recovered from their short sale, they've recovered their finances, they saved a down payment and they were able to get into the house and now they're enjoying a very nice home and a lot of financial stability which uh, has ended a lot of the stress that they have dealt with over the years. So that was a real fun story to work with too. So there is a light at the end of this tunnel. There's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Right now you can actually finance a home with uh, a down payment of course uh, one year after short sale, which is different from what we've been experiencing the past few years where it's been two or three years. So now one year after short sale, you can actually go out and buy a new home. That is awesome. That is terrific. Well, I know D2E has some amazing prizes to give away, too. She's always a giver. She's a giver in everything she does. And oh, I can you. tell you that D um, wants to give a prize to, well, you know, let me let you tell about the prizes. Okay. You got that? The first one is going to be, what is it? What's the prize? Okay, $25 gift certificate for Publix. Ooh. And what you need to do is be the first one to have the closest guest uh, as to what these steps are in a real estate transaction. So many people don't know what the role of a realtor is, how we work, and how many things we go through from when we list a property until we close it. So I would like to, you to guess how many steps are involved and be the closest one. And if you're a realtor, you should know this. Okay, but Stuart, you're not allowed to win this prize. I'm just okay. saying. Okay, <laughs> sorry, sorry, honey. <laughs> hey, that would be a good test to see if he's still watching. He could have checked out already. Um, okay, so the first person that can post either on the WOMTech Facebook page, that can email D2A the answer to this question, um, if you're watching the archive broadcast, it be the first person to respond, and don't assume somebody's already responded. So even if you watch this 24 hours from now, don't assume. Respond to her anyways, because hey, she, she's a generous person. You never know. Um, and let her know how many real estate transactions do you speculate happen between the time of the listing and the time of the sale? Right. How correct? many steps are in that real estate transaction? Okay. And I'll give you a hint. Can, okay. I give, can I give them a hint? You can give them a hint. It's on my website. Oh, it's on her website. And what would your website be, Dee? Innovative RE Group. Dot com. Okay, InnovativeREgroup.com. And when you look at her spectacular logo, I can tell you it was, it was designed by the incredible Diane Vivian, who was on the segment earlier today, which is awesome. Now, as I told you, Dee's a generous person. She's very given, so she's not going to give away just one prize today. She's going to give away two. And Dee, what's the second gift that you're going to give away? Well, the second thing I'm going to give away is a $25 gift card. And it's going to be from a gas, you know, it'll be a gas card. So you can let me know what gas station you prefer. And I'll go get a gift card for you from that station. Okay. And I would like you to use your skills on the internet and be the first one to tell me what my blog post was about today. Oh, awesome. Okay, so today, so today being the 6th of November. Okay. So you need to find my blog 
and you need to tell us what it was about. Okay, that's awesome. So November 6th, um, D2E's blog, and once again, that's InnovativeRE.com. Um, thank you so much, D, again, for being here today. I love you dearly, and I appreciate you for being a guest on our show. Thank you all for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the segment. I hope you learned a little bit of something. And, you know, mainly I just want to encourage you to, to be the best that you can be, to be a blessing to others, to continue to put into the lives of others, because I promise you it will come back to you. Until next month, I look forward to seeing you then, the first Wednesday of December. Oh, my gosh, where did the year go? Have a safe and happy Thanksgiving. God bless.